Morning all, hope you're doing well, hope you're staying safe. It's Monday, March the 29th, 2021. Welcome to the video. Got quite a lot again to get through this week. Every week seems to bring up new news. Usual US and Florida stats is what we're gonna kick off with for COVID. Then we're gonna look at vaccines, how we're we doing nationwide and in Florida. Dr. Anthony Fauci was interviewed on TV yesterday, so we've got his thoughts on the potential for a new wave. The city of Miami Beach has extended its state of emergency into this week. And we'll look at what Paul Charles has to say on when the US borders might reopen and his reasons for that. There's pressure building on the US government to reopen sailing channels and let cruise ships sail again from the US. Governor Ron DeSantis has threatened to sue the CDC if they don't let the cruise ships sail again. But meanwhile, two cruise lines are going to be operating from the Bahamas from June. I've been looking at Virgin Atlantic's re-inaugural flight VS-75 from Manchester to Orlando that gets away on May the 17th. I'm, I'm using that as a kind of barometer to see how many people are going to take that flight, whether that number's going up or down. At Disney World, they're trialling the Magic Mobile app, which is going to replace the Magic Band eventually. And they're also trialling facial recognition software to gain entry to the parks. Disney's All-Star Movie Resort reopened finally last week after refurbishment. And we've got prices for the rooms as they stand now. At Universal Orlando, the new Universal store is taking shape at the bottom of City Walk and the old store has a change of name. Over at the Velocicoaster, things are progressing there as well. We're going to take a look at Disney World's park availability calendar for the rest of March, April, May and into June and a little bit of October. Things are starting to fill up there. And finally, we'll take a look at the weather. If you're new to the channel, please do give the video a like if you like it. We don't charge anything for this channel. There's no Patreon, there's no Super Sub, nothing like that. Everything's free for everybody and nobody's going to miss out. Okay, let's crack on. New COVID cases in the US as of Saturday, 63,659. The US seven day average was 61,377. Last week was 56,123. That's a 9% increase. Active cases in the US, 7 million down from 7.2 million last week, a 3% drop. The US seven day average for deaths is 998. That was 1,081 last week, so an 8% decrease. Into Florida, new cases there yesterday, 5,883. Florida seven day average for new cases, 4,958. Last week was 4,465. That's an 11% increase. Active cases in Florida, 544,000. Last week, 620,000. That's a 12% decline. The Florida seven day average for deaths, 63, that was 68 last week, a 7% drop. Florida hospitalizations as of Saturday, 2,863, and that's just started to turn up. So a 9% increase in new cases across America, an 11% increase in Florida, not great news. But active cases down 3% in the US and down 12% in Florida. Deaths down again also, that's a few weeks in a row now, deaths have been down. So if active cases are coming down, if deaths are coming down, then even though new cases are going up, I'm guessing that somewhere in the middle they're going to meet and they're going to start coming down again. So let's have a look at total vaccines. Total vaccines distributed as of Saturday, 180.6 million up from 156.7 million last week. That's 23.9 million in the week or 3.4 million per day. Total vaccinations given 143.5 million up from 121.4 million last week. That's 22.1 million in the past seven days or 3.1 million per day. We've got 56.5 million to go to meet President Biden's uh, 200 million vaccines in his first 100 days. In order to do that, we've got to get 3 million for the next uh, 19 days. I think we're going to do that. We're getting there right now, so I think we're going to do it. Total percentage of the population with at least one dose now is 28.2% from 23.9%. That's a huge increase from last week. Total percentage of population fully vaccinated is now 15.5%, up 2.5% from last week. Looking at which vaccines have been used, Pfizer now 25.7 million, was 21.1 million, Moderna 22.7 million, was 19.8 million, and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine 3.1 million was 2.1 million. So the Pfizer one seems to be uh, the one that's kicking up. Florida has maintained its 25th place for percentage of people having had at least one, one dose of vaccine, but it's dropped from 23rd to 26th place for the percentage of people who are now fully vaccinated. 
In the graph of vaccinations by country, Israel seems to be topping out. The UAE is second, Chile third, UK fourth and the US fifth. Europe is still lagging quite a way behind and, and fell further behind this week. Dr Anthony Fauci was interviewed yesterday and gave his concerns over a new surge in cases. We are seeing a little uptick now across the US and 30 states last week provided an, an increase in cases which is poor really. The city of Miami Beach last week declared a state of emergency and put a curfew in place as a result of spring breakers breaking the rules on social distancing. That was extended to this morning and I've heard nothing that that's going to be extended any further. Paul Charles, who's an ex-director of Virgin and now runs his own PR firm, tweeted on Saturday that he believed the US will reopen their borders before July and pointed to American Airlines bringing back its long-haul fleet into operation by the end of May for his reasons for that. There's been no further update to the story last week that President Biden is looking to reopen the US borders by the end of May, but I'm looking at that every day. The CDC rescinded its no-sale order for cruise lines, but then put in place a framework for conditional sailing in its place. This is a 40-page order that prohibits cruising potentially until the November the 1st, 2021. To get around this, Royal Caribbean and Celebrity Cruises said last week that they will begin cruising again out of the Bahamas in June. Meanwhile, Governor Ron DeSantis has threatened to sue the CDC unless it lifts its framework from conditional sailing. Pressure is mounting on the US government to ease international travel restrictions into the US. A number of lobby groups have written urging the federal government to partner with them to develop a risk-based data-driven roadmap to rescind inbound international travel restrictions. I've been tracking Virgin's re-inaugural VS75 out of Manchester to see how ticket sales are going. Prices have changed again, with economy seats costing £34 more than last week. Premium economy seats up £54, but upper class seats down £1,855. So there's a reason for that. There were six upper class seats available last week, but that's now risen to eight. There were nine premium economy seats left last week, and but that's grown to 17. In economy, which is shown as almost full last week, now you can see that this is almost empty. I can only think that Virgin had held most of those seats back to make people believe that they'd been sold, but they really haven't. So now we've got a pretty much empty plane going out on the 17th. I'll be keeping an eye on that. Into Disney news, Disney World is now trialing facial recognition software. The test will last until April the 23rd, and participation is optional for guests. This is in addition to using your magic band or other form of ticket for entry, rather than instead of it. Disney's Magic Mobile, the phone or watch app, which replaces Magic Band is also undergoing testing by some cast members. No date has been announced by Disney for the implementation of either of these new technologies. Disney's All-Star Movies Resort finally reopened last week after a long refurbishment period. You can now get a room tomorrow night for $212 plus tax or $159 if you are a Florida resident. A new license plate is coming out which will be available to Florida drivers soon. This commemorates the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. It's not available to buy just as a blank for anybody outside of Florida. Universal Orlando, the first speculation map, has been released for Halloween Horror Nights 30, which starts on September the 3rd. These houses have not yet been confirmed apart from Beetlejuice. We can expect more changes before the houses are officially revealed. Tickets are not yet on sale, but if you are intending to go, I would say get in there quick in case there is limited capacity. New lockers have been put in place at the entrance to the Velocicoaster in Islands of Adventure. Again, no opening date has been released yet for that new coaster. The new Universal store at the bottom of City Walk has had its new signage installed, and at the same time the old Universal Studios store going towards Margaritaville has had its signage replaced. It's now called the Universal Legacy Store, and it's going to sell retro merchandise as well as props from movies and from theme parks. Looking at the Walt Disney World Park availability calendar, there's quite a lot going on with that now. For March, for theme park tickets and resort guests, there's just Epcot available on March the 31st. Annual pass holders have a little bit more availability. In April, for theme park tickets and resort guests, there is at least one park unavailable every day except for the 30th. Check on the app to make sure your park is available for the day you want to go. The alternative is to start in another park and hop to the one you want at 2 p.m you will need the park hopper to avail yourself of that facility. Annual pass holders in April, there's a lot more green, but the weekends are filling up. 
For me, theme park ticket guests and resort guests won't be able to get into Hollywood Studios on certain days, but other than that, it's still looking good. Annual pass holders just have no mag Magic Kingdom availability on May the 1st. June is really starting to fill up in the first half of the month for theme park tickets and resort guests. Check availability for your park. And if you haven't booked your parks yet, I would strongly suggest that you do so quickly. The whole of June is available for annual pass holders. Into October and Magic Kingdom is unavailable for theme park tickets and resort guests. Keep checking back to see if additional capacity will be added. For annual pass holders, Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios are unavailable on October the 1st and Magic Kingdom unavailable on October the 7th. The weather for the next few days, cool snap coming towards the end of this week, but other than that, it's 80s generally. Okay, that's the news for this week. If you did like the video, please do give it a like. That drives views and drives that algorithm to share it with more people. If you want to see anything added to the video, please do comment underneath. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Take care for now. Bye-bye.